Hello and welcome to another tutorial slash spotlight in Universal Electricity. Today once again we're looking at assembly line which has changed quite a lot since I last profiled it uh, in that it actually does interesting things now. Um, of course the other thing is I'm no longer the only person on YouTube doing this so the chances are you've already seen all of this but look it moves and it has like bits that go up and down and I can change them with my, my wrench like that. It goes up and down and it's wee very pretty. Anyway, these are all fancy new toys. These aren't. These are um, these are solar panels. Uh, by the way, I may I may sound less clear or more clear or some different kind of clear just because my microphone has stopped. And as a result, I'm using my laptop's inbuilt microphone, which isn't great. The other thing is there's sound. I don't know if that's a bug or not, but there is sound. So anyway, let's uh, let's talk about the new things in universal electricity, or rather, let's talk about the old things first, because one of the things I showed you last time was the uh, the sorter, which has since been renamed the rejector. You make it like this; it's very cheap, doesn't even need any special plates, but it doesn't have a GUI. You may be able to hear now I'm right clicking on it, and that's because we need to use these things, imprints, which are made like this. Again, very cheap; they don't need uh, anything fancy. And in order to use these, we need to use this block here, which is the imprinter. This is a bit more expensive, but again, it's it's not expensive at all, really. So what we need to do is we put the imprint in here, and uh, then we need an item to uh, say, for example, to block. Let's just let's just use stone for now. So we put the stone in there, and we now get this with the imprint stone. The other thing we can do with this is uh, imprint recipes onto it. So if you put in an item which has uh, got a recipe there, uh, so uh, hold on, I'll, I'll show this. Uh, if we put the, we can't put the imprinter in there. Let's see if we can put a crate in there. No, we can't put a crate in there either. <laughs> this is going well, isn't it? You can see I've really, uh, really played around a lot with this. We can't use any universal electricity items. If you put an item which has a recipe in here and encode it, you can then put the. Uh, the imprint in here, this bit here, and as long as you've got the resources either in here or in here, it will automatically craft it for you. So you don't need to use a crafting table. It's sort of like the project table in uh, in Red Power. Anyway, let's go take our imprint, which has been uh, encoded with the stone, and we put that in there. And when we look at it, it says stone. What this means is exactly how it worked before. If we uh, just throw stone onto here, it will punch it off. The other thing you might notice is that uh, you can no longer collect items off the conveyor belt. If I just uh, take some stone here. Remember beforehand uh, you would pick these up, but I'm not picking them up at all. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They work a lot more like pipes. Seems like a good place to show you crates. If you use factorization, you'll be interested in crates. You can uh, you right click on an item with these. They can store lots and lots of stuff, and you can break them by right clicking with a wrench. That will allow you to pick them up, and also give you the uh, slowness debuff because it's heavy. Yeah, so they're just basically a way to store excess items. Uh, the manipulators work with them, as you can probably see. They can take them in and put them out. Uh, now there's this block here, which is under here. You might have noticed this lighting up. Uh, let's just take our imprint here and go and imprint it with some more stone. I'm just going to get rid of the uh, crate there because otherwise it's going to be slowing me down. And we're going to put the imprint in the imprint slot. We're going to put the stone in the stone slot. And what this is here is a detector. If we look, the detector is made... It doesn't appear in any eye. It doesn't have a recipe. Okay, I'm sure it will have a recipe. Oh no, there's the recipe, right. Uh, it's because it's in a different state. So I have Ender, Control Circuit, and Advanced Circuit, any kind of circuit, a basic circuit. Again, cheap. This thing is, you then put the imprint in it, and again it says stone. So now if I throw a detector down over the top of it, nothing happens. But if I now get some stone, and throw a stone over it, it lights up. It emits a redstone signal, as you can see. So that's, again, fairly simple. Well, that's just there to show you. Uh, hmm. I think that's uh, that's it. So uh, we'll, we'll move on to the part which is perhaps the elephant in the room here, the arm bot. Now this thing is, uh, it's not that expensive, it needs a diamond, uh, some steel for the advanced circuit. Um, but it is, it's pretty cool. And I'm actually going to uh, move into a new bit of the tutorial here, uh, so there's just going to be a jump cut. Okay, and we're back. And the reason that, of course, I never went anywhere for you, but uh, the reason I had a uh, brief moment there is just, well, I went to familiarise myself with the controls, because we're going to be getting into some basic programming. 
what we need is a disc, which is an advanced circuit surrounded by imprints. That's fairly expensive, uh, but you only need one, and it will allow you to program the ARM box. But what you need for this is the encoder, which is made like this. So again, this is you need diamonds, but then it's not Minecraft. You always need diamonds. So what we do is we put the disc in here, and there are several commands that you can do. I'll type them out. Idle. You can just press Enter, or you can press the plus here. Idle will cause it to basically sit and wait. Uh, rotate will cause it, I just turned off any eye. Uh, rotate will cause it to rotate by 90 degrees. Uh, grab will cause it to pick up any item that's below it. Uh, if it's hovering over a conveyor belt, uh, it will wait, and the grab command is on, it will wait for an item to pass below it before it does pick it up. Uh, there's also drop, which is the inverse of grab. Uh, it will drop the items it's holding onto another conveyor belt. Return will take it back to uh, where it was at start, which is, uh, I believe it faces south by default. I don't know if that's a bug or something that's going to change or what. And then there's also repeat, which will cause it to repeat the uh, previous, item, uh, previous thing. So uh, let's just delete that and get us a new a new disk. Uh, you can also delete commands by highlight, so if I just type drop here, should have done this before, so that you can delete it with that. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a simple one for moving an item from one conveyor belt to the other. So we're going to start off by telling it to rotate, which will tell it to rotate 90 degrees. We then tell it to grab, it will then wait for an item to come below it. Uh, it, it can collect several items I believe, I'm not sure what the actual limit is. We then tell it to rotate twice, because it needs to rotate 180 degrees. Uh, I think, actually, hold on. Oh, you can tell it to rotate 180, so uh, you can actually specify how much you want it to rotate by. You learn something new every day. So do I. You rotate 180, which will take it around to the other side, because I'm using the same setup as before. You can hear it going in the background with its weird noises. It's quite distracting, really. Uh, so that's going to rotate 180. We then tell it to drop. And it's going to drop the items onto the other conveyor belt. We're then going to tell it to return, just so it uh, takes back to the start. And finally, repeat. And what we've created now is a basic program for moving items from one side of this conveyor belt to the other. As usual with uh, this, there's no GUI on this. I just right-click there. So we just right-click the disk. And we can see it's currently in rotate mode, rotate 90 degrees. Now it's waiting, it's in grab mode. So we're just going to chuck some stone down on there. It's picking up the stone and it's rotating 180 degrees. Rotating all the way around. It's dropped, you didn't see it drop because it happened very briefly. And it's now returning to the start. It'll now idle for a second before it uh, starts to rotate 90. There it goes. And it will start again. Now, I am not a programmer. I, I, I've taught you the basic commands, which are available on the wiki, uh, which is linked in the description. I'm sure you can do much, much more fancy things with these. Now, there's actually lots of people pe playing this, um, instead of just a few of us. Uh, it's What's it doing at the moment? Oh, wait, I don't know what it's doing at the moment. It's just being a bit weird. Um, yeah, so this is basically how you can organize things a lot better, because you can now move things from thing to thing. You don't need a whole row of rejectors along here. Uh, it, it's all very, very smart. Um, I believe they're, they're working on implementation for the ComputerCraft API, RailCraft, so it integrates with stuff. I think it can, it can also pick stuff up off the ground. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. I've just taught you the basics, basic tools, teach amount of fish and all that. Uh, I think that's basically everything to show in uh, atomic, uh, not atomic Science, in Assembly Line at the moment. Um, let's just have a look in here. Yep. Yep, I believe that is everything that's been shown. Uh, thank you again for watching, and goodbye.